if this is your first time watching this replay, just a bit of a background. Monique here is obviously the client and she has been working on this new campaign in her business and she is very uncomfortable with attention. Initially, her presenting problem was like, I want all the attention, was what she said. Uh, but we found out after a few minutes that she's actually very, very uncomfortable with this attention. And so we're here now. I'm just questioning this layer of attention. Um, and let's learn from this. Well, the nurturing side of me is telling me that I'm maybe I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> but... I don't want to believe that. So again, what she's saying, the nurturing part of me says that I'm not ready for attention and I don't want to believe it. So this is a conflict already, right? Like there's one part of her that says, girl, you ain't ready. But she's like, no, actually, I don't believe that. So this is very, very typical. Our um, very typical conflicts that all of our clients will have. So um, here's how I question this. So it thinks that you're not ready for all the attention. Yeah. Right. How come? Yeah. And notice how simple the questioning is. How come? The reason why I asked that was because I want to know why. <laughs> There is a reason why. And obviously this part of her that's saying, I'm not ready for all the attention is the reason why she's holding herself back from being comfortable with the attention, right? So I want to question it. This is how we get to the root of the problem just by questioning, like how come, what is the reasoning that the unconscious mind has made? What are the reasons that it has somehow concluded to, um, to keep her in this stuck state? must be a reason why it doesn't believe you're ready. And this is where we want our clients to be, like just thinking quietly for her specifically, her very uh, specific trance is looking out in the corner, eyes open. Um, but you can tell that a lot is going on and she's really contemplating the answer of that question. So when you're here, even this looking back now, I spoke a little bit too much. We always say, shut the fuck up in your sessions. And I, um, and even for this, uh, looking back now, I probably could have just not added that other question and it just allowed her to think about it. Um, but, you know, here we're here to learn. <laughs> and so this is where you want your clients um, to be. The more quiet you are, the better it is for them to contemplate. Because you're, when you think about it, right? When you're at, like you're being asked a question and then you're not given that time to ponder it, it's really annoying. So that's why, that's why you you just shut the fuck up. And you can see from her eyes, she's like, she's very active here. Um, <laughs> well, lately, lately I've been thinking about how much I feel like a little girl on the inside, but my, my just outside doesn't really fit the model. <laughs> and um, yeah. what came to mind then was, you're still just a little girl. You're still just a little girl. Yeah. So one of the things also, if you're, if you're kind of stuck with not knowing which question to ask, the easiest thing is to echo specifically echoing more of like unconscious information. So she went off in a trance there and then she came back with this really weird thing of we feel like a little girl on the inside it's very odd right very very odd uh very odd thing to say um and so if for some reason you're stuck because this happens you're stuck and you're like what question do I ask you can just look at 
to look at their response and what are you curious about with regards to their response and as you can hear there I was like something about little girl like you feel just like you're still a little girl and just um taking their response and then turning it into a question afterwards so like you can hear the intonation of my, the last part so you're feeling like you're just a little girl like you it's literally <laughs> taking what they say but you're forming a question mark um or feeding it back as a question um so that they elaborate more and expand whatever it is that they meant to say make sense that's interesting you're still just a little girl. What a curious thing to say. You're safe. I'm here for you. And you can immediately see the emotion, right? That meant something to her, whatever that means. So just repeating that meant something something to her that as we repeated it, she is starting to become very, very emotional. So that's how you know that you're in the right place. And take your time here to keep you safe. When your clients are emotional, this is something that I like to do and what I teach to to prevent ab reactions from happening. Just what I said there, I'm here for you. Take your time. I'm here to keep you safe. Um, how you are being in the session is going to affect this as well. Like if you maintain a, a, an open and regulated presence within your sessions and your clients, your clients are going to open up, uh, and they will feel safe. But again, when they're, you can see the shift in her emotion, right? She was like talking, 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 and then boom, became very emotional. So, um, when that happens, it's always just a great idea, especially more at the beginning of your session to, uh, reinforce safety. So I'm like, I don't want to be a little girl anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's the the adult version of me that wants to be a little girl. <laughs> like I oh. want to have, I want the best of both worlds. Ah. Uh, hmm. So you want to have the best of both worlds. So the adult actually want, wants to be a little girl, but the little girl doesn't want to be a little girl and wants to grow up as well. Is that right? Yeah, like... What I'm doing here is, again, feeding back what everything she just gave me. And also to confirm, um, this is a huge conflict, right? And I think this is present in most of us and in most clients where you have this conflict of, um, the, like, the little girl the inner child <laughs> wanting to be free um but the adult or for her specifically she was like the little girl wants to grow up and but the adult in her wants to be the, that little girl that is such a huge conflict <laughs> no wonder why she's pretty much stuck in her situation right and so by again repeating that same conflict again and asking it in a way of I like I'm not giving her a suggestion I you can hear me at the end is that right um I'm having her confirm uh, because I don't want to assume and she was like yeah and then just by giving all of the information in front of her I talk about the um the backpack right like taking all the shit from the backpack and she is literally taking all the shit from her backpack and I was like here you go like is this right and she's like mm, yeah um, because that consideration is um, is what's going to help her eventually solve her problem. Make sense? We're not we're li really not doing anything here. <laughs> we're really just repeating unconscious information. The adult wants to be free and playful and just that and. Yeah. like uncomplicated and just 
like a little girl. Mm-hmm. But then the little girl wants to. Wants to have all the, the powers or abilities of the adult. Mm-hmm. Doing such a great job. So you want to be playful, uncomplicated, fun, but also have the powers and abilities and capabilities you have now. Yeah. Does it have to be one or the other? No, I don't want it to be one or the other. So what I did there was, again, feeding back all of the information, right? So she wants to be this or this. And this is what the mind does, um, where it either says it's either this or that. Somehow the unconscious mind will lock off this belief or this conclusion that it has to be this or that. I either have to be playful or I either have to be like serious and accomplishing all the time like an adult, right? It's called an exclusive or. And so it's like this or this. And so by questioning this, um, when I ask, does it have to be one or the other? You're really just questioning the belief that the unconscious mind has made. This is a really powerful question um, that you can ask your clients um, if they they are stuck in that it's this or that. This happened um, in one of our trainings as well, uh, in one of the demos um, where we had Um, a conflict between business and motherhood uh, with one of the students, um, Abby. And she was like, I either have to be a business owner or a mother in my family. Like somehow her mind has like dissociated the two. It's either this or that. So when we questioned it, she was like, no, actually it doesn't have to be. It can be integrated. So this is like such an easy question, but um, very, very powerful when you just question, does it have to be one or the other? Because then the mind will go, Hmm, maybe not. And this is how you can collapse the this belief uh, or this exclusive or that the mind has made. Uh, right. And of course she said, no, it doesn't have to be one or the other. So you can so you can um sorry, so you can kind of see that the mind is reconsidering now after the mind like we opened up the mind and we said this is what you literally just told me does it have to be one or the other or she's like no so then she's made that choice and that actually will collapse that conflict and obviously she's still pretty emotional here um and what i just asked there was how are you doing i'm just checking to see where they are if you have like your your sessions are going to go up and down like this where it's like emotion down emotion down so when you have a really uh, emotional moment with your client always check in again to see where they are at the present moment um i'm just trying to relate it back to the attention Mm -hmm. and like um like what do I what 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 do what do I need to be ready? What am I re- what am I trying to be ready for? Mm-hmm. That I'm not accepting or not not stepping into or feeling. So this moment here is really good when you have clients who are like this, when they are asking themselves the questions, because you can copy it. Click, you will see me copy it very soon. So pay attention and really listen to your clients. If they're like, they go into a trance, go into an emotion and they're like, yeah, I'm just wondering this, like they're asking themselves the question, use those exact questions. Again, you don't need to think. If they're asking themselves that question, they need to really consider that question. So you're going to feed it back to them and give them the space to think about it. Because in their daily life, they're probably avoiding 
asking that question, right? But for you, you are literally just holding them and be like, answer the question, <laughs> really consider it. Um, so very easy, just copy it or be silent. Comfortable about. What are you not ready to feel? With having all the attention, of course. I think it's something around like not being not being perfect or knowing that I'm not haven't got my shit sorted, which you know, I've done a lot of that kind of work work around being okay with sucking. <laughs> um, but also Being, I guess, I think in some part, being ready to to take it all, to take the positive and the negative criticism or feedback that might come a part of that. Now, what comes is coming to mind when I'm bringing that up is my ex. So another cliffhanger there, but. <laughs> Here we go. So um, what we saw in that last part there is she's really reconsidering everything, right? Like she's, she knows she's avoiding something. And now she's like, you know, like, am I re ready to take it all the criticism, the, you know, the negative things that can happen having a lot of attention. And if you're a business owner, this is going to happen, right? You will get those constructive feedback from others. Um, and so um, that is we're getting to the really deep layer as to why she is afraid of attention. It's because maybe she's still holding on to the perfectionism um, or the being OK with sucking uh, and or um, ha being OK with being constructively criticized. Um, and so we're going into the deep layer here, plus that last part, uh, which is very, very interesting. She then mentioned her ex. Uh, which is, again, very interesting, hint, hint, <laughs> this is where the session went um, after that. Um, and it's really, really interesting because just by using the principles, you can see that I didn't make any shit up with my questions, right? My questions were directly related to whatever it is that she said. Um, and it, when you just do the simple thing of question, answer, answer, question, you can get very, very deep into this layer very, very quickly. If you went to, from the beginning, it started off as like, I check my notifications way too often. Where are the likes on my post? <laughs> and then now she's talking about her ex, right? Very like, it's so odd, <laughs> like the, the, how far it, it came um, or how far of a trench hole we got into.